good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It's like being in the Rose Garden. So many beautiful ladies joined us. Thank you so much, Lucy and Sarah, for joining uh, Mia and myself today. And um, I'm sure you will have a lot of stories to tell about the perfumes you're creating or, or selling. So, um, Lucy. Hello. Can we start with you, please? Because you joined first. <laughs> So I'm, I'm sure a lot of people tried your perfumes, but uh, not everybody uh, knew how to match the face to the fragrance. No. And uh, you've got a lot of talents. Well, thank you. One of thank them, you. you're an actress. Yes. You're a film director. Yes. And you, you call yourself a perfume designer. Is that right? Is that correct? Um, well, some people call me a perfume designer. Um, I would call myself a, a perfumer, but a lot of people call me a perfume designer because I haven't been to school. Um, I mean, not perfume school. So um, even though I compose all the perfumes myself, uh, some people will call me a perfume designer as opposed to a perfumer, and they make that distinction. All right. Good. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, what about you? Because I saw that you collaborate with the different perfumers. And uh, do you make perfumes yourself? Um, I have. Yeah, I've made a few perfumes myself. I've not released any yet. Um, that um, is definitely in the, the pipeline right now. I've got one that is ready for release. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we are Yay. Um, but yeah, and I'm doing like, um, so I, I did um, a lot of classes with Sarah McCartney at um, 4,162 stays. And now I'm doing some um, with Ashley Eden Kessler, who is like the um, person who's, um, uh, she runs most of the classes at the Institute for Art and Olfaction in LA. And I've always wanted to take those classes, but now they're available, which is really cool because of the, um, you know, lockdown situation. So mm -hmm. they now have like Zoom, Zoom classes, which isn't the same, of course, because you can't like make stuff. But I found as, um, as a creator of perfumes, actually one of the first challenges for me was um, figuring out what materials to get, where to get them, and those, those types of, of hurdles. So those, you know, not so much the blending and the mixing. I feel like that is more... Uh, I, I'm an artist, so I come, come from a creative background. So I feel like mixing and blending and making is probably something that is more within like my wheelhouse and actually like the more technical things of like what lab materials you need and, you know, what, where to get your, where to get your scent molecules and, and where to start. I mean, you know, mm. there's so many thousands of different things that you can get. So, um, how did you get started, Lucy? What was what, what kind of drove you to start creating? Um, my husband bought me a, a book for Christmas, the Lizzie Ostrom book, The yeah. Century of Scents. Mm. And um, I wanted to know what everything smelled like. And Lizzie's book is fabulous because it's anthropological and sociological, and it tells you so much about what's going on. And I loved it, and I was frustrated with it in equal measure because I wanted to know what these things smelled like. And so I went back and I started digging and I started trying to find what were the things that made these um, first scents so extraordinary. So things like heliotropin and, and, and vanillin and things that were um, amazing at the time and revolutionary at the time. And so I, I managed to get uh, a kit of aroma molecules, aroma chemicals, and um, I already had the central oils, I'd already, I was already qualified in aromatherapy, so I already had a lot of essential oils, and I just started playing. And then I taught myself the EU regulations, the IFRA regulations, and uh, really went from there. Wow. wow. Yeah, I'm impatient, mm -hmm. so I just started fiddling about. These days, there's so much information online, and I mean, you you can um, the the Ifra database, and you know there are, 
there are it's ways all there. of finding it's all yeah. there should you want it should you want to to you know sort of put the work in it and and get that information you you know it, it is all there for you mm. um okay very good lucy uh, moving on to that um for someone looking to get into perfumery they want to start making even just for practice at home what would be your advice to them i would say um first of all i would look at some of the eu regulations the ones which are really kind of strict things like levels of methyl eugenol so make sure you stay away from the really kind of um high irritant molecules or materials naturals like um you know don't put an awful lot of orange in something because it can be phototoxic don't put um oak moss in something to nth degree because there is a chance that it might irritate don't put a massive amount of rose in your perfume because uh, that has oh, something no. called methyl eugenol in it. I know, I know, but you've got to be really careful with the rose that you have, you know, because all roses have something called methyl eugenol in it mm -hmm. to a certain degree. And methyl eugenol is not just a carcinogen, it's also a mutagen. So it means that if you are nursing or if you are pregnant, those things can go into your fetus or go into your baby. And, and that's just not a good idea. It's just not. Just because something is natural doesn't make it safe. So I would say safety first and foremost. You've, you've got to get on board with that. It, things smell wonderful, but you have to make sure that you're safe. Brilliant. Um, just to add on to that, so ideally you would recommend someone to have a know-how of the ingredients before uh, would you say that someone should maybe study chemistry before they can get started? Because I don't know. If I'm sitting at home... I haven't studied chemistry, know. Maya. No? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there is hope. chance to everybody. Go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Explore, it, explore your talents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they... There are people who do amazing courses, like Sarah McCartney, um, like John up at uh, Cotswold Perfumery, I think does one. Um, there, there are a lot of courses that, that can be done and they will all tell you about safety. That's one of the first things that they will tell you. A lot of the time as well, they will only give you a sort of set number. Um, I mean, Sarah, you've done, you've done Sarah's courses, but I, I'm assuming she just gives you like sort of 10, 15, um, things which are already diluted probably to about 10 or 15 percent that you then mix and so there's no chance that you can overdose on something okay um i mean well <clears throat> i mean in her in her case i'd say she she's got a lot more than 10 or 15 things oh no she <laughs> has but the ones that she gives you to to you know when you're when you're mixing that i i know she's got she's got fucking oh no but i mean in her workshop she, she yeah no she's got she, loads she gives people access to yeah like, much more than 10 or 15 materials which is really cool mm. i mean i've taken a different different kinds of workshops with her so i did um i did a five-day one with her um I guess that was two summers ago now. And um, yeah, that one, we, we, we smelled hundreds and had access to hundreds of materials, mm. really. Um, and then I think, it, you know, like I did make something which was uh, not IFRA compliant at the, at the level that I wanted um, it to, to be at. So I had to alter the formula. Um, so, mm. so in that, yeah, I guess in that case, it was just a matter of, um, <clears throat> you know, like kind of knowing which ones, as you say, to kind of be wary of, yeah. And then going and making your formula as as you as you would, and then um, you know finding out if if what if it's if it's okay to have it or what dosage essentially, what yeah. percentage um, uh, dilution, it's safe to have at um, when you're if you're going to sell it. Yes, maybe you're going to sell it, or uh, you know, I mean, in that sense. Um, Obviously, you have to test it on your skin and see if um, I have definitely had reactions on my skin from various uh, samples that have been sent to me and very various things. So mm. I know that I have allergic reactions to some materials. Um, I think pine is one of the ones that, mm. that gets me. Um, 
but that's which is a shame. Probably, yeah, it's probably the terpenes in the pine that that do that because they can be quite aggressive. I've seen someone selling online and they've pointed out that this fragrance is obviously not compliant with the IFRA regulations. I don't know, is that allowed? Yes, yes it is, it's allowed. What isn't allowed to sell in, certainly in the, the UK or in the EU are, th are things which aren't EU compliant. Mm -hmm. uh, EU regulations are sometimes stricter than IFRA and sometimes not as strict as IFRA. Um, but EU regulations are some of the most stringent in the world. And if you're selling in the UK, then you have to make sure they're EU compliant. Hopefully not for long. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Did you, have to, did you have to reformulate any of your perfumes since the uh, change in the IFRA regulations? Me? Yes. No. You have to. I think, no. I would have thought not because by the time you made your perfumes, they had already made lots of changes because the changes came in earlier. The, the changes come in when I first started, it was on the 48th regulation amendment, and now we're on the 49th and things have oh. changed. Oh, okay. Yeah, some things get lower, some things get higher, but it's. Mm. Um, what was your first perfume? Samadia Paris. Samadia Paris. Oh, it sounds like a perfume that has a lot of story in it. it well, it was a love letter to my husband. So it was, um, yeah, it, it, there is, yes. Uh. <laughs> it was, it was a love letter to my husband. And uh, we used to have a flat in Paris, just off the, the Rue Claire in the Septième. And I wanted to do something that reminded him of waking up then. Um, Did you a, make... On a spring morning. Did you make this perfume after you filmed your husband in the movie? Yes. Aww. This is amazing. When a husband and wife are working together and uh, they stay together after having working together, <laughs> they do not split <laughs> because they say that business is, business together is really hard. Let's say hi to Anjam. Anjam uh, joined us. Hello, everyone. Uh, Happy Sunday. Hey, yeah, I'm fine. Fine. how are you? I'm fine, how are you Lucy? Long time no see? Yeah, long time since you came here. Yeah, how are you? Very well. Very that good, awesome. you look very well. Hello everyone, hello Olga. Hello, hello Mia. Hello. And I don't have met you Sarah. We've not met, hello. No, we've nice. not met. <laughs> how are you? Here I meet Hanjam. <laughs> it took me a while getting in. How are you Andrew, all doing yes. today? Hanjam is from the industry as well so she's got a lot of interesting questions and uh well you're more than welcome you're more Thank than you welcome I'm so happy to see you so um uh, i've got a small trailer uh of your movie because i'm so i'm so excited about you being so talented in different in different um areas um if you don't mind i can show you just 30 seconds of the trailer of, you, of the movie you made. Absolutely. I have to warn everybody, it was 13 years ago. It's excellent. It's a, it's a great movie. So this movie is called Morris, um, the life. What was the, uh, the correct name? The Life with Bells On. Yes, The Life with Bells On. And it's about Morris dancers, isn't it? Yeah, it's about an avant-garde Morris dancer. Avant-garde Morris dancer, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, being a foreigner, I didn't understand it was an avant-garde Morris dancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Mor Morris dancing like is it. just, it's just silly. It just makes people laugh, so. It makes <laughs> laugh a lot. <laughs> Morris dancing. Seemingly an innocent pub pastime involving hanky-waving bearded men. Or rather, is it an aggressively contested contact sport beset by politics, intimidation, and resistance to change? Change, of course, if I did, it is madness, probably. I live for it, I breathe for it, to be honest, I die for it. In fact, a number of people I know have actually died doing it. I hereby declare that Nelson Morris is formally rusticated from the Morris Circle. Well, do you know what? I was just gonna say, looking looking at that piece, 
it just reminded me of a piece that Sarah has done. I don't know, Olga, if you had uh, seen the Versace campaign, um, Sarah, she actually starred in it and she directed it. I don't know if you got a chance to see it. I'm not sure. Did you? And um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I want to see it. Can I see it? Um, I'll try and look it up. I don't know if I, um, I can find it. But I loved, I love that film. That looks amazing. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I was, I was I say, to watch it. It's gonna... I'm a huge fan of silliness. So I'm, I, I... <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> Did you directed that or did you write it? Yeah, I did. It? Did write it? What no, we... I directed it. Really good. Sarah, are you able to add um, uh, for the Versace campaign that we can see it? Yeah, I. Um, it's going to take me a second to find I, that. That's okay. fine. Take your time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> surrounded by talented ladies today. Amazing <laughs> talent in the house. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, moving along as we wait for Sarah to upload. I know she's trying to. The thing I, is, I found it now. It's just a matter of um, share. Of I've not ever done a share. I'll just. Um, there was actually a few videos. Yeah. But just to um, just to kind of keep it simple. I'll Dear Donatella. Yeah. I will, um, I'll just show the, um, I'll just show the, the one minute, um, Ooh. <gasps> oh, I, I love this fashion. Oh my God. That is awesome. Amazing. Okay, here we go. Dear Donatella, I almost lost everything. First came the blackmail note, you did not write Spritzby. I did write that song the night Angelo died. I confronted his ex, the Baroness, and she told me Angelo is alive. Angelo survived the crash, recovering from amnesia. When he heard my hit song, Spritz me with your love. He wanted money. He conspired with his accountant, Jacob, to take down my empire, Narcissus Records. Jacob even proposed my daughter Cairo in order to frame me for tax evasion. I tried to reason with Angelo, but I got arrested. Luckily, the Baroness is a world-class spy. She sprung me from jail, proved Jacob a fraud, and had Cairo's wedding annulled. She saved Narcissus Records. Like you've always said, strong women need to support one another. Love, Angelina. Oh, oh that is wicked. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, I didn't know about this talent of yours. But I thought you had seen this. No, no, I haven't seen that. No. But I repeat, we are in a beautiful rose garden right now. Look at all the talents and this gorgeous, gorgeous people just doing really, really beautiful stuff. And I missed, uh, I really miss this fluffy hair. Because <laughs> I had something like this with my first. Oh, okay, I've got fluffy. Don't have, you don't eat it. Yes, you have it. I've got the DIY Corona cut at the moment. <laughs> oh, bless. Uh, so you know, um, you know, actually, there's another perfumer who's in this. Um, who's in this book? So this is a. This is actually a book. Oh. Yeah. So it's like a sort of coffee table photo book. It's available. Thing. It's available in the bookstores. Um, yeah, it's a, available in a few bookstores. So mm -hmm. there's, it's filled with pictures. But what's really interesting about the this um, conversation is too bad um, Helena Christensen couldn't join us because you know that she has a perfume brand as well, Strange Love NYC. Oh, of course she does. Ah, ah yes, and uh, perfumes are tarots, I think, aren't they? I think they are, if I'm not mistaken, I think um, they have them in- Yes, Africa. they are on the sixth floor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah that's the long yeah. for a so, yeah. Well, um, maybe somebody who joined us or who will watch uh, this video doesn't know um, the perfumes you make. So let's start with Lucy, a little bit of about your collection, your, uh, let's say now classical collection and your new natural, Naiki collection as well. Yeah, uh, the, the first one, La Maison Hedonique, um, done uh, House of Hedonism. It's just all about 
pleasure. Um, and I can, I can, like, yeah, I can. That's <laughs> I, can I agree with you. <laughs> Carry on. And um, it's I started with Samadhi, and then I had four when I launched. So I had Samadhi, I had Aparo, I had Koman Lu, which I know Olga, you you love. Um, and I also had Saf Blanc, um, which is my real kind of leathery, whiskey, sort of rock chicky type. Somebody said it, it wasn't, it reminded them not so much of the Walk of Shame, the Stride of Pride, which I quite liked. Um, Cause it's that, it's the sort of scent that you wear if you are um, walking home at three o'clock in the morning and in your stilettos and you just don't care. Would I walk home in my stilettos? I'll probably take them off. <laughs> 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 um, and then I, I launched, I started launching a few more. I launched Insai, which I know my, you're very I fond of. I love Insai. Yeah. Oh, um, wonderful. Can, can I let you in on a secret? Yeah. I was shooting a video and these two beauties, they made it in the top 10. Oh, wow. Wow, oh, Maya. I'm really touched. Uh, I'm I can't really wait, touched. I can't it. wait for people to see that because I think it's going to be very exciting. And yeah. everyone who thinks they know me, they know me. I think they are in for a surprise. Well, <laughs> oh my God, I'm I am so I'm touched and I'm honoured yes. and and quite humbled actually to be in your top ten. Um, I I also did a I did one which. Uh, is a really interesting one because it's using a molecule which a lot of perfumers use uh, to give what's called a first sniff effect. And what it does is it kind of twists all the other um, perfumes and it's, it's called RDR, mine. And it's my, my joke because it stands for Rian de Rian, which means absolutely nothing. <laughs> because it, it smells of nothing on a blotter at all. But once it gets on your skin, my God, it does extraordinary things. Um, I mean, Maya, you've been in the room with me where I've sprayed it on about 14 different people and they yeah. all smell radically different. So it's a great twister. It's a great one to use with your current perfumes if you got a bit tired of it or if everyone else has bought it you know and then you can you can spray that on and give it a real kind of personal twist it, it makes everything bespoke which is i think fabulous right. and but then the shown is not is not listening to us with his molecule eccentric molecule. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um and then i did two with the countess of carnarvon because i I rent a house, Olga, I know you've been here, Maya, you haven't been here yet. Um, and um, I rent a house on the High Clear Estate, which is where they film Downton Abbey. And um, Lady Carnarvon is my landlady, and she wanted to do a couple of scents in collaboration. And so I did 1793 and Lorato, and I know you're both you're both fans of 1793, which is, uh, Olga is the Rose Queen. <laughs> she is the Rose Queen, so anything with roses in it, I know she will love. And um, this is a very different, it's, although it's a musky rose, uh, it's very green. Um, so it's very natural, it's very dewy and um, settles on the skin really, really prettily. Um, so those, those are my, those are my, my ones for Le Maison Hedonique. And then I have started an all natural, alcohol free, uh, all, my, all my stuff's vegan anyway, but I, I sort of made a point of t saying that these are vegan and they are, it's called Nakey, which stands for nat uh, natural, naked and kind. And they are alcohol free and completely 100% natural. And and they're proving really, really quite popular at the moment. A, a lot of people seem to be enjoying them. I've, I've sent some to Singapore, I've sent some to Australia. Um, and as I haven't put these in for retail at the moment, for obvious reasons, um, you know, everything is going online. And it, it's, it's actually really easy to send them anywhere because there's no alcohol in them. Um, they're not water-based, they're not oil-based. Um, I use an alkane. Um, which is derived from ecologically, it's an eco-cert um, base derived from coconuts. It's palm-free. 
Um, and it's really kind on your skin. It's lovely because alcohol, perfume, some people can find them really drying on the skin. Um, Water-based perfumes, the same. People can find them really drying. And this is just so skin kind. It's lovely. It's really lovely. Lucy, I'm, I'm, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, I try them, I've tried them for one week and each, every day, my perception of these perfumes changed. So as if they were completely three different perfumes each day. Wow. And does it mean that my nose is strange or because you used all natural, all, all natural ingredients, it may change according to the uh, pressure, mood, um, humidity in the air, did you these, have any well, these are very much, um, I've used your emotions very much as a, a trigger for these. So your state of mind could just be changing them. Emotivate in particular is designed to tap into your limbic system, mm -hmm. which is the, your system of uh, emotional learning as opposed to semantic learning. You know, the semantic learning is two plus two equals four, four and cheese goes in the refrigerator. Um, but your emotional learning is uh you know it's your hippocampus it is your amygdala it is those parts of your brain that say no fire is hot and it's going to hurt me that's your amygdala um and then it's your your uh, emotional brain your hippocampus is the one that says oh apple pie grandma um so it could be your emotions are coloring what you smell that day yeah, because I, in one week I couldn't choose one I preferred, uh, so I think I will be buying all three of them because <laughs> because no, uh, it's it's not only to advertise your perfumes, but because <laughs> I noticed that um, they really pleased me, but in different days, all three of mm. them. So like the double shot, double shot is absolutely. Uh, embracing, warm, it's like uh, a plate and you have a glass of uh, brandy or cognac or something really, maybe rum or something really... It's cosy. It's a... Cosy and sweet and cosy. Some people uh, feel um, coffee in it. Yes. I, I don't. It's, it's licorice for me more than coffee-ish. Yeah. But it's okay. really, really warm and cozy and uh, a quiet trace is for the morning. You wake up and you don't want to run. I've never run actually in the morning. But when I, <laughs> when I try it, I think maybe tomorrow I will. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what about, have, um, Mia, have you tried them? I, I know, I'm, I'm sure you have. I have. I have. It's interesting hearing you talk about how you smell the coffee or what you smell because I get different things. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. To mm -hmm. my nose, it's more caramel. It's mm -hmm. command, sweet, warm to my nose. But then you get something rum. I don't get to that. So it just goes to show how everything is different on everyone. Yeah, what your nose will pick up, and yeah, quite interesting. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Sorry, I missed the first fifteen minutes, so it may have got covered already. But <laughs> um, what made you, um, Lucy? What made you go from um, the classic range and evolve into this range? What motivated you? What was the inspiration? It um, was one of my bespoke clients actually who couldn't wear alcohol on her skin, right, yeah. um, and she didn't want. A perfume oil because she wanted that that throw and the the base that I'm using the alkane that I'm using actually is a, it's a volatile um, medium chain hydrocarbon uh, bio based uh, and so it does have that volatility that alcohol has without having that drying effect I mean it's not exactly the same as ethanol of course because ethanol is incredibly volatile and that's what makes everything go whoosh but um it it does have uh, a measure of volatility in it which oil doesn't have an, an oil-based perfume will keep it very very close she also wanted to be able to spray it 
and there was something she said I, I just I, I I just don't I, I don't want to just roll it on I want to spray it I want to I want to feel that cloud of loveliness that other people can have and so I started researching it and I started researching water-based perfumes to start with and the solubilizers that are used in a lot of water-based perfumes some people aren't happy with with either um, the way that they are extracted or the way that they're used and so i and again you know water-based things can be a little bit drying so i decided to go back to the drawing board and see if i could find something that wasn't either so i gave myself that technical challenge Oh, wow. Okay. Now I was interested because, you know, I obviously, um, you know, I'm Muslim, so I can understand why, you know, we've grown up to like fragrance and always worn oils and mm. burn non alcoholic, you know, fragrances, you know, at yeah. home, um, I'm fasting. So I, I would normally just stick to my oils or my perfume oils, um, which I know, um, you know, have just come straight from the, you know, just yeah. the sort of you like, yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't want to use alcohol for an awful, all, you know, all sorts of reasons. As I say, the, it can either be because they find it a little bit irritating or for faith-based reasons yeah. or for uh, other reasons, you know, maybe they are recovering and they just don't want to be reminded of anything to do with alcohol. So yeah. th there's, um, there are all sorts of reasons for developing it. And I'm, I'm very pleased I have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm flexible, but it's nice to have that. I like to have that option, you know, like if I go to the mosque or, you know, in the morning or whatever, then I, I, I'd rather wear that, you know, than wear. Yeah. And when I'm out and about, I'll normally just spray, you know, non-alcoholic fragrances. I mean, alcoholic fragrances, you know, etc. cetera. Or, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because um, there's another brand called Hermetica, um, which sort of say they do that as well. Um, um, but they, in a different way, they've got a different touch to it. I don't know if you've heard of them. No, I haven't. I'll look them up. Yeah, yeah. Have a look because they say they plant a tree for everyone. Um, maybe I've said it wrong. No, it's Hemetica. Yeah, yeah. Hemetica. Okay, I'll have a look at that. I'm just getting questions. Um, someone is just um, asking a question before I forget. Um, this one goes out to Sarah. They are asking, they say, Sarah, could you please talk about Shared and what is the story behind the fragrance that they've worn it and Thirty hours later, it's still on their skin. What is that? What is making it last that long? They are very curious to know. Sorry, I just thought I'd say in case I forget. <laughs> Don't give away too much, uh, too too many secrets. that's like you know top secret information. Um, <laughs> but um. That's, thank you so much for your question. Yeah, Sherrod is like um, an extremely long lasting perfume that was made by perfumer Andreas Wilhelm. From, he has a perfume brand called Perfume Sucks. Oh, I didn't know that's his brand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's, um, so the story behind it is inspired by Sherrod the film starring Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant taking place in Paris. Hi, Sarah Colton. <laughs> um, and um, so it's kind of um, a very sophisticated classic um, fragrance, yet it has this kind of, um, I think it's quite contemporary as well because it has this sort of leather armchair yet like tuberose field um kind of combo it's, it's sort of like um it's really mashes like both uh extremities of like gender as far as i'm concerned it's it's very very male and very female at the same time so i think that that's what's kind of ties it together and it has um honey in it so it's a little bit sweet but um a little bit like um um a linear fragrance as well i mean i find it just i find it kind of smells it's just a very consistent fragrance for like a very long time like it doesn't really have um too much of of of, of like a beginning middle and end it just kind of gets it almost in, in a way seems to bloom as it progresses if anything it kind of like you can sort of smell the the flowers even more clearly as the perfume progresses so Oh wow! I think I just yeah. just tried it because um, 
uh, Mia sent me some samples so I can be ready for, for this talk as well. And I find it so yummy. It's it is fruity and a little bit boozy, but I think I, I feel booze everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's, it's really pretty. You do. Yeah. Um, someone just said to me that um, this fragrance, they see it, because um, I don't know, going back to the movie, and I know, Sarah, you are into like uh, the older sort of vintage vibe movies and that sort of thing. And going back, they said what they pictured was a man on a motorbike, like in a leather jacket, motorbike. I don't know. That wasn't in mind, was it? Driving, like driving through the tuberos fields, like when they're ready for harvest sort of a vibe. On a, on a, like a hot day. On a hot day. Sunset. Going to meet his lover sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of, I kind of was picturing, um, um, Audrey Hepburn's like beautiful back garden and full bloom and having, um, Harry, having Cary Grant over for, for tea. And cause it has a tea, it has like a sort of a black tea sort of vibe to, to it. I, I don't think tea is actually one of the ingredients, but, um, um, it ha it has like um it has this kind of um sharp sharpness to it that reminds me of uh, of like a hot cup of earl grey tea and then yeah. um, that honey that like added bit of honey like kind of rounds out the sweetness and it has just like a real sophisticated kind of old timey kind of feel to it in, in yeah. like a like a sort of glamour like a hollywood glamour type of uh, type of a feel to it i think yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, if anyone, anyone who's here, if you've got a question for Lucy or for Sarah, please jump in. Jump in. You can write the questions or you can uh, let uh, Olga or myself know. And I'll either ask the question on Olga or you can come on camera and speak your truth. Um, okay. and Sarah, um, I don't, I've seen your that stuff on, online on Instagram, thanks to Mia and Olga. And I think I saw um, saw you at Javoy, but we didn't get a chance to speak. So um, I'd like to really hear from yourself um, a little bit about how you started off and the inspirations. And because I, I always like the story behind the product, you know. So it'd be nice if you don't mind doing a mini intro. If, if I missed it at the beginning, I, I don't know. Did you guys do that already? No, I haven't really talked um, about how I started. Sorry, twenty minutes late. So yeah, no. so nice oh. to. Uh, if you don't mind someone who hasn't you know explored your you know your your product it would be great yeah so um when i when i first um when i first got started it was um i guess about five years ago now um it i had um made a film actually that was a a fictional film that was about this um CEO, this woman of a fashion brand. And so I designed the logo for the brand and I designed costumes and homewares. And actually here's the sort of <clears throat> Rocco Rosso, <laughs> one of the pillows, one of the props. Like so, um, so I did all this kind of like visual and storytelling and all of these um, props and all this stuff. And, and it was it was great. It was a really fun fun project, and I was very happy with with the piece. But then, kind of afterwards, just what had this emptiness. Like I really wanted to actually create something that um, was a brand, and so um, I just kind of went around to art openings, going, "Oh, I'm going to do a perfume brand. I'm going to do a perfume brand." And then um, eventually, I bumped into somebody who said, "Well, you should go talk to my friend Stephen." Gun Gantari at Lucky Scent. So I went, um, I was there anyways, and he said, oh, you should speak with Saskia Wilson-Brown from, she just founded this organization called the Institute for Art and Olfaction. And I couldn't even believe my ears because I actually knew Saskia since 2001 because we were both in art school together at the same time in London. And we worked together. She curated me into shows and we showed together. And like, so we had this like like relationship. Wow. So I called her up and she got me started. And Ashley Eden Kessler um, 
helped me make the first two perfumes. I wanted to do a very male perfume and a very female for perfume. And so we, we made Greek Keys and Leopard. Oh, I but, love those. So it, Sarah, Sarah's got a leopard. I'm wearing leopard today, actually. That's my, my scent of the day. Um, and so the leopard is kind of like sort of what Joan Collins would wear sort of thing. Um, I, I'm a huge Jackie Collins fan. So um, I love that kind of like over the top storytelling and, um, <clears throat> and, and just the kind of the, the 80s glamour of, of it all. And so I wanted it to have that like 80s power woman vibe, very much inspired by my mother, actually. And then Greek Keys is kind of like, you know, a contemporary Drakkar Noir, sort, Drakkar Noir sort of like, or um, um, what's that one? Um, Blue, is it called? Or I'm, I'm blanking the name. It's one of these like really big um, designer, designer perfumes. It's from Chanel there. Blue. It's no, Chanel. no, it's not Chanel. It's um. Uh, no, 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 the Dolce and Gabbana. Yes. The Dolce and Gabbana light blue. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, but it turned out, so, so I didn't know a lot about perfume at that time. So um, it turned out that I quickly learned that, um, you mean. that like, yes, it's a good fragrance. It is. I, it, is. I, it, it is good. Um, so, but then I quickly learned, I was like, okay, I can't actually be selling these as male and female fragrances because first of all, every single person who's bought Greek Keys bought, was a woman who was buying it for themselves. So like, the, it doesn't act, like it, it, it's up to you guys, you guys decide. Yeah. So that was when I kind of really decided that everything was going to be unisex. Um, and then my, my fragrances were all initially inspired by fat, fashion fabric motifs. So um, Greek keys, leopard, lace, and tartan. And they were all kind of like about what would you, what would those um, fabrics, what do, what kind of um, places do they evoke? Like what, or if you're wearing them, what sort of, what sort of like a feeling would you get from, from that scene? So like, for instance, tartan is like a, in the highlands and, you know, you've just gone for a long walk in the highlands and then you end up in a smoky pub with your first glass of whiskey under a tartan blanket and it's kind of a really cozy autumn fragrance mm -hmm. um and then so then i kind of kept on just kept on developing kept on working with different perfumers meeting meeting loads of people in the industry so you know met miguel matos met andreas wilhelm and um loved what they were doing well you know um miguel was actually a not a perfumer <laughs> and um i met with him at Petit fragrance so that he might review my fragrances you know because he was he was a a, a fragrantica reviewer mm -hmm. and during that meeting instead of well, i did get to show him a few of my things but what was actually much more interesting was that he showed me a few of his things and one of the things that he showed me was jungle jezebel which he had a different name for at the time Love um, the bottle. i know Oh, it's a great awesome. bottle and it's a great fragrance. <laughs> his, my, daughter, my daughter said, if you let me take a picture and when I need to use it, I should, but it's hers. <laughs> <laughs> that is so sweet. It's like a doll. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, but so that, so, so, but Miguel Mato said, so he presented me with like a finished fragrance. So it wasn't like we worked, you know, full disclosure. We did not work collaboratively on the creation of the actual fragrance, which I came, which at first I thought, I can't tell anybody that. But then I kind of came to realize that there are, there are many different ways to, to go about doing things. And there's no right way. There's no wrong way. You don't have to have gone to school to be a perfumer. We all kind of know that now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, so, you know, maybe, maybe as an artistic director, it, this was more like a found object or something like that. It doesn't have to have, you know, started from the, you know, spark of, of the inspiration. It can actually come about in different ways. So he showed me Jungle Jezebel, which at the time was called Streetwalker. And he was like, I think you're going to love this one, Sarah. This is about a hooker walking down the street, wearing a Versace handbag and eating a banana. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I smelled it and I was just like, what is this? It was like just the weirdest thing. I that, love Jungle Jezebel. I didn't know. like it at first. I didn't like it at first. There's a lot of jasmine in it. 
Yeah, tuberose and jasmine. I love it. Tuberose. Like, tuberose. Love tuberose. It. I think you're you're absolutely right. Forgive me for jumping in because I I know this fragrance. I've smelt it and I love it and I think it's fabulous. And there's a couple of things that I want to say. First, the bottle's genius. It is. Um, Second, I think you are incredibly generous and incredibly open-hearted to, to share that, that story of, um, of how you came across it, because a lot of people would kind of fit and say, oh yeah, no, 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 it was, it was me really, he just kind of you know, did what I told him to do. And you haven't, and that's really, really generous and open-hearted, and I absolutely salute you for that. Oh, thank you. Um, and that's the third thing I is, tuberose is absolutely, it belongs in the gimp swing of olfaction. It is just, it's just fabulously pervy. I think it's, it's wonderful. So 